Hello, good evening. Can you hear me? Good evening, teacher. Yes. Hi, good evening. Yes, we I can refer. hear you. Oh, good. Hey there, Suma. Hey, Mr. Saez. Hi. Hello, good evening. Hi, how are you guys? Good to see you. Very good. What about you? I'm okay. I'm okay. Thank you for asking. Let me check one thing here. Hold on, please. Let me check on one thing. Okay. Hi, Sulma. Hi, Anna. Good evening. Yeah. Anna, how are you? I have I remember you. Hi. Really? I, yes. You remember me from where? <laughs> I'm sorry. But I'm sorry. Do, do you live in La Cima? No, no, no. I live in Santa Ana. Oh, okay. No, okay. <laughs> Because a long, long time ago, I had a, I had a student. I remember that, and she was similar mm. like you. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, my, my pleasure. I'm okay. Thank you for asking. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Claudia, Marcela, how are you? Um, I the person with some uh, something like I have I. Have to do in classes, other classes, but I'm okay. Thank you for asking. All right, good. Good to see you again. Hello, Lisa. Hi. Uh, hello, Jose Wilfredo. Hello, good evening, teacher. Good evening, sir. It's a pleasure nice to be here. Thank you. Pleasure to have you. Um, I I see new faces. I see David, Samuel. I see Jose Wilfredo. New. And um, yeah, so Jose Wilfredo, where are you at? I'm sorry, I, I don't get it. I'm sorry, where, where do you live? Where are you, where are you at? In, uh, in I live in uh, Santa Tecla. Oh, okay. Yeah. Is it raining there? No. No, it's my fan. Oh, it's okay. because you know, those days are so hot. Oh, yeah, definitely. Is it raining in your house somewhere? Because I see a lot of chats in, in the um, Inglés Corporativo chat that there is like a, there's like a little storm, but it's okay. It's not raining where you live. No? All right, good. And uh, um, Mr. David Samuel, where do you live? I live in Santa Tecla, too. Oh, you live in Santa Tecla. Awesome. Awesome. Yes. Okay, now, Alejandra, Adelina, Rodrigo, and Maria, are you there? Yes, teacher. Hello. Yes, teacher. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I, I um, Today's the first day of class. There's one thing that is called set expectations. And um, I see a lot of faces here I have in the previous class. So I, I told them, but I will repeat. Um, if you could please have your camera on, because Insafor needs the camera on. Class, do you remember? I think his name was Rodrigo. Last last class. Yes, teacher, I was. No, no, then it wasn't you. There was somebody in the class that every day he connected, he never spoke. Mm -hmm. He never participated one time in the whole class, really. But he, it, he never turned on. And every time I called him to participate, he never spoke. 
and um, he was my perfect example because what happens is that um, many people, maybe they're busy or something, they, they only turn on the class and have a background. You know, I will listen and maybe they're chatting, maybe they're eating, maybe they're watching TV. It's okay. But the problem is that um, I think you are in class. So I ask you questions and, and if you don't participate, you know, so that's why it's affordable. Always ask the class to uh, have a um, camera on or be active because yeah, there was somebody, I forgot the name, but he never, he siempre le decía, se acuerdan? Hello. I forgot his name. It was not Rodrigo. Though. I would always say, hi, are you there? <laughs> but he always, he connected every day. And he was like the first one to connect and the last one to disconnect. You know, I think he was a spy. <laughs> Maybe he was a spy for, for, um, it's a fork or something <laughs> because you never connected. Okay, so um, please connect because um, if you are in camera, then obviously you are in class and you are active. Yes, for example, in this moment when I said hello, Maria, uh, Adelina, Suima, and Rodrigo, only Adelina and Rodrigo said hi. What well, Suima? See, Maria never answered, so I don't know if Maria is there or not. Hi. Yes, I'm here. Okay, <laughs> thank you. Good, but you see, but I don't know if like, oh no, he mentioned me. <laughs> you know, so. <laughs> no, Hi. here I am. Okay, good. Hi. So, um, we have TOEFL. Do you know what TOEFL means? I don't know. Not really. Test of English fluency. Language. You said test of English fluency? Language, yes. Mm -hmm. it will be test of, ling test of English as a foreign, as a foreign language? Yes, yes. Uh, that was my next. What happens is that test of English as a foreign language would be the correct, but what the the main objective for TOEFL is your fluency is, is how you speak. Because if you go, I don't know, let's say you go to a call center. Example, right? They don't, what they really want is your fluency. Mm -hmm. They want to see if you understand, if they can understand you. And that's it. So that's why within time, yeah, but actually TOEFL is test of English as a foreign language. But, I, you know, but now it's becoming more popular as test of uh, Test of English of fluency. Mm -hmm. Like, for example, when you go to like an embassy and ask for a student visa or something, you know, they will ask you for this. And the problem is that sometimes, sometimes you, um, you can be very, very good at grammar, but you need to speak it also. But that, that's okay. That's what we're going to do today. All right. Hey, class, you know, like a week ago, I, I didn't have hair. I shaved my head. For a... I had a friend. Well, she was actually my ex-girlfriend. She had cancer. And... um. She had an operation and then she they shaved her head. So she's my friend. I mean, she's my ex-girlfriend, but she's my friend. So I shaved my head. The funny thing is that I was the only one that shaved my head. And you know what my ex-girlfriend says? She says, why did you do that? My boyfriend got mad at me. I said, oh, my God, I'm sorry. <laughs> that was not my intention. <laughs> my intention was support. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, but you know, I forget you. Then <laughs> you know, that I believe that that illness for those times is so popular. But uh, I guess that is the way. Maybe how we, the way that how we eat. Because you know, there are some food that 
it's really damaged for us, but it, the taste is really good. Yeah. You know, I was I was reading that what well, cancer has always existed, but like in the 50s, uh, 60s, and 70s, it wasn't very really that popular like today. And if you notice in the 80s, um, I was I was watching this documentary. In the 80s, there was like this big evolution or revolution in everything, in music, movies, and food. You know, like the microwave got very big. Um, there were then there were microwave pizzas, there were microwave dinners that you can actually put a dinner in two minutes. You have chicken, rice, salad, everything. So all those food had a lot of conservatives, you know. So a lot of um, a lot of like um, everything was very instant, and yeah. for, so from the eighties, imagine uh, in America in, in the United States. A lot of people started eating that a lot, a lot, a lot. So in the 90s, you see a lot of people having cancer now. And then in the Salvador, in the 90s, it, it's, it's becoming, remember, I don't know if you remember, but in, in the 90s back, a typical breakfast was eggs and beans yeah. for children. Now, a typical breakfast for a, uh, for a child in, in the city or in the mountains anywhere is a pancake. Yeah. Cereal is very Americanized. And how healthy is the funk it is? Yes. It's everything's is not it, yeah. So so that's cancer's coming a lot from there. So it's scary. I think I am going to die from cancer, really. I, I because come on. <laughs> no, you know what? Because well, they say that cancer is hereditary, number one. I mean, I mean yeah. So <laughs> My it's mother, a my, disorder, right? Yeah. So my mother, my father, my grandmother, all my grandparents died of cancer. My mother and my father died of cancer. So mm -hmm. uh, I don't want to think like that, but I just hope I get it when I am very, very old. Oh, well, maybe that is a sign of alert that you may take yes. additional care of your life or That's lifetime. True. Mm -hmm. That's true. That's true. You're mm -hmm. you're right. At Maybe. least just when my son is old enough. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. So uh, uh, there's Lisette. Hi, Lisette. Alejandra Mendoza. Hey. Yes. Okay. Hey, Mr. Jovito's there too. So um, Anna, Rodrigo, and Adelina, Adelina, you don't have cameras? Yeah. Not too sure. I don't have. Okay. Oh, there you go. Yes, we have. No, Adelina, sure I don't have stories. Okay, no, okay, thank you, Anna. Just be active in the class, please. And you know, so Adelina, I like your name, Adelina. Okay, teacher. Adeline. Yeah. Uh, okay, so um let's start. Um, one thing remember, I, I always tell my class, please be active in the class. Do you know do you know what is an active and passive? In grammar, do you know what is an active and a passive? Mm. Active is the sentence that is including the verb with the action, right? Kinda. A passive too. But what uh -huh. is it? What is yeah, an active? Talking about the voice, the voice, active voice, passive voice. Okay, maybe. Yeah, okay, okay. What is an active and passive voice? Do you know? Uh, active voices with you talk in the okay. in the uh when the bird have done and died adopted and then the passive voice we do in bird you have the right idea but you need to fix it a little it's very simple listen it's i mean yeah it can be in grammar it can be in in anything active is who does the action and passive is who receives the action simply right the problem is, there's a little problem when it comes to English. The majority of students in English are passives. They only like to listen. They, that's all. They like to listen and take notes and listen, but they don't like to talk. 
And that's a very big problem when it comes to speaking English because you want to speak. The main objective of English is to speak. So you have to be very active. You know, not only passive. And that's the big problem. That's why people always tell me, oh, you're an English teacher? Yes, I am. You know, I have a very big problem. Oh, man, you know how many times I hear this? Yes, what is your problem? I can understand everything, but I can't speak. You know why? <laughs> because all the time you studied, you are always passive. You're only receiving information. You are only taking notes. You are only... When the teacher said, do you have any questions? Quiet. Do you have any other questions? Nothing. <laughs> you know, that's why. So remember, in English, you have to be active and passive. Yeah, because you know why? Because you don't study English. You learn English. There's a big difference between learning and studying. Yeah. Remember, I, yeah, remember class, I told you that once? You don't study to drive. You learn to drive. How do you learn to drive? Being active. Mm -hmm. You don't study to dance. You can't. It's impossible to say, oh, I study dance. No, you learn to dance. You learn to cook. Every, anything you... Any action you learn, you don't study. And speak is an action. All right. So I could understand why sometimes people, because ever since we went to kinder, we have the idea that when you go to class, you take notes, take notes. Good. But that's when you study, when you study a topic. But when you learn a topic, you don't really study it. You practice it okay so remember that because it happens a lot you know um let me give you an example my wife my wife i don't think she's listening <laughs> um she she can't drive and she she will never drive and uh and she paid uh, like two schools she paid the driving lessons but my uh, she decided to study more the laws than to practice it so when it came to practice she gets nervous like oh okay but when i'm driving she tells me this is your stop no this is an avenue so it's just, she knows all the laws but she can't drive so that's like I relate that to a student. Sometimes a students, they know very good the grammar, but they can't speak. You know? So you have to even that. Okay? So let's start. Do you have any questions before we start? Yes, I don't know your name, teacher. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, hold on. You know what? Me... <laughs> yeah, hold on. Let me put my name here. David Baltrans. Okay, my pleasure. Yeah, then, sorry about that. Yeah. Mm, it's okay. David Baltrans. If you ever meet someone Baltrans, he has to be my family. Oh, really? Yeah, I think we're the only ones. Baltrans. Where are you from? I'm sorry to ask, but it's not the first time. Um, I, <laughs> yes. I'm actually from here, but my grandmother and my grandparents, well, my grandparents, they were from Catalonia. Ah, really? Nice. Yeah, yeah. so I, awesome. am a, I am a very, that's why I am a very big Barça fan. <laughs> okay. That's cool. okay. It's yeah, a great I, point. That wh Thank that's you. why the last name. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I have to be, I have to be a Barça fan of, ever since I was a little kid, I remember my, my, my grandfather. He, okay. Th there's two things I remember. He taught me how to drink coffee when I was like four or five. My God. And Barça. <laughs> I don't think he taught me how to drink because I was too young, or maybe he did give me beer. But, <laughs> but <laughs> yeah. All right. So yeah. So okay. um, let's start. Um, there's a chat group. The there's a chat group. It's called the TOEFL eight to nine p.m. Yeah. So, okay. Uh -huh. 
So if you have any questions, you can write to the group. If the if the question is in general, if the question is directly to me, please write me directly because sometimes I work in the day and sometimes I open the chat and I see like 30 or 40 chats. And I say, oh my God, <laughs> and I have to go back to see if. So if you have any questions, please write to me there. Okay, so let me open. Let me open the screen. Let me share the screen. Do you see my screen? Yes, yeah. we can. As we can. Yes. All right. Do you see where it says intro to reading section? Yes. Yeah. All right. Let's listen to this intro. Yeah. Let's listen to the lady. Welcome. This is TOEFL Preparation Course 1. In this course, you will find challenges of reading, about the reading section, two types of questions, and practices about the reading types. So basically, this is going to be a little bit about reading. Okay. One thing, one thing, um, one thing I recommend you when you read is you, if you don't have good fluency, it's going to be difficult for you to, to read. Even in Spanish. Even in Spanish. El individuo fue arrestado por estrupio, estropio, estuprio. ¿Cómo se llama? Estru Estupro. 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 Okay, Estupro. good. You see, but in that sense, if you can't pronounce that, it stops your 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 reading. El individuo fue agarrado, fue arrestado en su casa mientras fue bajo el cargo de estup, 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 estup. You know, so that that's going to happen in English. Yeah, that's going to happen. It's in in fact, it will happen because you know, I mean, there there might be some new words for you. So what I recommend to you is that when you don't understand a word, say it in syllables. Say it in syllables. For example, what is a complicated word to pronounce? For um, me, let's see. <laughs> which word? Bank, bank, bankruptcy. Bank, bank, oh, very good. Bankruptcy. And that and Okay. In okay. My case, mm -hmm. In my case, one of my, uh, the most difficult to pronounce is, uh, well, in Spanish is joyería, like jewelry. jewelry. Yeah, it's kind of difficult. Okay, good. Very good. That's a good example. Let's start with Anna. Bankruptcy. Mm -hmm. So let's say bankruptcy. Three syllables, right? Mm -hmm. Can you say it? Bank. Bank. Okay. Rup. Bank. Bankrupt. No, uh -huh. no. For, first say bank. Oh, okay. Bank. Rup. Crop. C. C. Okay. Those are three syllables. Now say, okay. say it in two parts. Bankrupt. Bankrupt. C. C. Okay. Say it, say it in one. Bankruptcy. Ah, there okay. Better. Bankruptcy. Okay. And Bankruptcy. if it's still and if it's still difficult, okay, then go back and say it by three syllables, then cut it in mm -hmm. two and cut it in one until you get it. Ah, okay. Thank you. Yeah, sounds better. Bankruptcy. Bankruptcy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> nice. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good. So uh, any anytime you have a problem with with uh with a word, I, that's what I mm -hmm. would do. I break it mm -hmm. down in syllables. If it's five syllables, say it and start with five and then with four and then with three. And if it's difficult with three, stay in three and stay in three and two until you get it. Now, um, Adelina, okay. you, you said jewelry. Yeah, that way. <laughs> how, how is the pronunciation? Okay, uh, Jew. 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 Uh -huh. Like say like in silent L. Jewel. Jewel. Re. Re. Jewelry. 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 Uh, yes, but I I need to sound I I in 
definitely it is a difficult word. <laughs> no worry. Jewel, but you have to say an L, like a L. Mm -hmm. You have to pronounce the L. Jewel. Jewel. There you go. Uh -huh. Jewel. Y después, re. Jewelry. Jewelry. Yes. There you go. Okay. Jewelry. Jewelry. Thanks. Jewelry. ¿Ya han oído a los costarricenses mencionar la R? They say like Costa Rica, Costa Rica. Sí. Yes. Okay, so say that, jewelry, jewelry. Mm. Yes. Jewelry. Um, what I do recommend to you when you have free time, I think I told my ex-class this, um, try to read books for children. Like um, read... Cinderella, read Snow White, Blanca Nieves, read it. Because it's very easy. Well, every page is two or three sentences. And it's very easy. It's very easy um, words. And I want you to read it, not because to understand, because I know you understand. I want you to read it to so you can read the sentence. Yes, read the sentence, read the commas, read the, the period. Yes, and trust me, that's very good. Okay, so let's go to video number two. Challenges of reading. Challenges of reading. When we take the TOEFL test, we need to know some strategies that will help us overcome some challenges. For example, you need to be familiar with the type of questions, pay attention to the number of questions, and skimming and scanning will help you deal with more difficult questions. Okay, so if you take the TOEFL test, you have to read the question. But very important. There's two things there. You have to read the question, understand the question, and you have to read the commas, the periods. Yes? For example, he said no. He said no. You know, there's a very big difference. So he said no. You know, like there's a very big difference. He said no. A complete sentence to he said, comma, no. I didn't say that. You know, so you have to, you have to, um, we will practice this. Uh, I, I can give you some reading material. So, but you have to really understand the question. And I think that's in anything. If you don't understand the question, there's a 99% chance that you will not say the right answer. Watch, you wanna see a cool trick? Let me see. Do you see the chat? Mm -hmm. Do you see my chat? I said hi. Yeah. Yes. All right. Who wants to who wants to participate in my <laughs> I'm going to give you a, a test right now of fluency of reading. Who wants to participate? Me, teacher. All right, David. What does that say? You're writing the Oh, chapter. I'm sorry. I'm Soon? sorry. I'm sorry. Big? Bob? Okay, now say it together. Big Bob? Big Bob? Bob? Bot? Bot? Okay, now say Big Bob Bot? Big Bob Bot? A big baseball bat. It's like a uh, 
Tom Twister? Uh -huh. Okay, now say it together. Big ball bat, a big bat. Sorry, big ball bat, a big baseball bat. Very good. Yeah, good. <laughs> you see, if you say by if you first, if you read it like big ball bat, yeah, then if you say big ball bat, a big baseball bat. Bat, a big baseball bat. Okay. What David? Congratulations! One good thing I I was watching. One good thing that you did here, and um, I always tell my class this: in English, there's three important things that you need to know, three fundamental things, and those three things have to be straight, like the curve. But it's it's. It's always impossible. Okay, number one, you have to have good comprehension. Number two, you have to have a good fluency or accent. And number three, good grammar. The easiest one, the easiest one is accent. Es la más fácil de mejorar así. Boom. I think the most difficult is grammar. Let me give you an example. Imagine, imagine I'm going to interview Jose, Jose Manuel. He wants to work. And in an English position. And I interview, what is your name? Jose Manuel. Jose Manuel, where are you from? Santa Tecla. Where do you work? Where do you, I'm sorry. Let me start. What is your name? My, uh, Jose Manuel. Where do you live? Santa Tecla. How old are you? 22. Are you married? No. Wow, man. Jose Manuel is good. Do you think, Manuel, uh, from 1 to 10, what is Jose Manuel's comprehension? One hundred percent. For me, yeah. For me, it was ten. He never said what, what, huh? And and I was fluent because if I say where are you from, what, where are you from, what, where are you from? You know, so you know, so comprehension. But his comprehension is good. What about his grammar? What do you think about his grammar? And his accent. I don't know. Because he only said Jose Manuel. He even said in Spanish. He said Jose Manuel Santa Tecla. Yes, 22. That's all he said. So I will repeat and I will say Jose Manuel. I will ask you the questions one more time, but I need you to answer completely. Okay? Okay. What is your name? My name is Jose Manuel. Where do you live? I am do living in Santa Tecla. Hmm. Are you married? Yes, I do. I am. How old are you? I am do 23. What do you think Manuel's problem is? Grammar. grammar. <laughs> his grammar. Uh, yes, obviously his grammar. But one thing I do like about Manuel is that he has good comprehension. He has a good fluency, but we need to work in his grammar. So the two, but his grammar is like this. Entonces hay que mejorar grammar. And how did I know that? By answering complete. Okay, so I will ask you, class, always answer complete. Yes. And I know that's very difficult because in El Salvador... En El Salvador no nos gusta hablar ni en español. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. Yes, <please. laughs> yeah, no, sí o no. Hey, ¿Qué onda? ¿Qué tal el fin de semana? Tranqui. <laughs> La casa. Yeah. Suave. We don't even say licenciado, we say leak. <laughs> We don't say universidad, we just say la U. So what happens is that if I ask you in English, oh, hey, how was your weekend? Ah, my house. Mm -hmm. 
that doesn't exist in English. So, and people will say, what? what? My house. What? What happened? You painted a house. You bought a house. My house. Well, <laughs> I stayed in my, yeah, okay, there you go. That's what I want you to say. I stayed in my house. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. So, going back to David, um, I don't know if it's only in El Salvador Spanish, but one big problem we have we have in El Salvador is that when it comes to accent, I don't know if it's in, sometimes I think Mexico, well, we don't, mejorar el acento is from your lips. It's in your lips. Let me see. Dian. Uh, David, what is your name? I'm sorry. It's weird. Wait, answer <laughs> complete. My name is David. All right. Adelina, please repeat. My sorry. name is Adelina. All right. Claudia? My name is Claudia. Ana? My name is Ana Gonzalez. All right. Rafael? My name is Rafael Antonio Morales. Okay, good. Bueno, everybody's saying it good, but I'm going to again to say my name. My name is... Oh, my name. Carlos. Exactly. But listen tomorrow, listen to anybody who speaks English. They always say, the majority say my name. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's impossible to say an M with your mouth open. <laughs> you need to close your mouth. My name. So what I'm saying is that in English, the, the, the definition of the word comes from your lips. A mí me dicen David. You know why? Because in español nosotros decimos, ya voy, vení, vení para acá, vení. O sea, no nos importa si decimos vení o vení. Vacacion or vacacion, you know, vaca, vaca. So in English, when when, when I call pedidos ya or something and I order something and I say, hey, and they tell me, what is your name? I say, okay, uh, Baltrons. Listen to this. I said, Baltrons. And they tell me, eh, ve grande o ve pequeña? It's, I never said Baltrons. I said Baltrons. You know, in English is. And that's why, because in, in Spanish, we don't like to use our mouth. But in English, you need to use your mouth. Like, for example, David, <laughs> big Bob bought a big baseball bat. Perfect example how you use your, your lips. All right. Okay, so let's continue. So once again... Let's listen to this video. Wait. Challenges of reading. When we take the TOEFL test, we need to know some strategies that will help us overcome some challenges. For example, you need to be familiar with the type of questions. Pay attention to the number of questions, and skimming and scanning will help you deal with more difficult questions. Okay, let's see the next one. About the reading section. About the reading section. The reading section on the TOEFL test measures your ability to understand written academic English. It is not necessary for you to have prior knowledge about the topic in order to answer the questions. Okay, let me do something here. Well, who who will take the test?
All of us, I mean. <laughs> We're here. <laughs> No, remember, the, the, this is the preparation, yep. but then the, the, there's the, um, hold on, let me, I'm going to pull down some reading. Hold on, um. Downloading this right now. We're going to do some readings that when you go to a job interview, um, where you work, do you use English? Do you practice English or? In my work? Mm -hmm. No, I teach math. Oh, you teach math. math. Yes. Yes, I do. I practice. Oh, yeah. Where do you mm -hmm. work? Where do you work? I work in a call center, concentric. Oh, but, yeah, concentric. Yeah, but last, uh, these last, uh, like we can say, two quarters, mm -hmm. we are assisting more Spanish accounts than English account. But always we have general communications. Of course. With clients. Uh -huh. I, think, I think working in a call center is a wonderful experience. Yeah. For yeah, any is. for anyone who wants to work in English, or why well, in anything, you know, because you really do learn a lot. Mm -hmm. Every day, you learn you learn a lot. How, you know, who else work uses English in their? Mm -hmm. Jose Wilfredo works in the Circle Center. <laughs> yep, I work in the Circle Center. Oh yeah, you work. But we in, are in different in concentrations, <laughs> but I have. Uh, Yep, I work for Concentrics. Oh, cool. But he's an admin, I guess. <laughs> I work as a not manager. What are you? You I, are. Uh, I work as a WFM. To... Oh man. Mm -hmm. You see, he's an admin. Me, I'm just an. <laughs> <laughs> no. So people hate you. Mm, no. Not really. No, no, who do, no, QA. <laughs> QA is the one that people hate. Right? QA, uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> do you guys work from home? Yep. Yes, I do. In my case, yes. I'm Con still working from home. Thanks, Rob. Concentrix is in front of um, Sabor del Mundo, right? Yep. Yes. Dell Tower. X Dell yeah. Tower. Yeah. I, I worked in Dell when it was Dell, Dell. Me too. Oh, Did was, you know how was long? a good time. <laughs> Oh, really, Anna? What year? Uh, this last June, I was celebrating my 17th anniversary. Oh. You were... And I never wanted to apply to anything. Of, wait, wait. Uh, wait you were in Dell in what year? What, what year did you start there? No, uh, it when I became a Dell employee, uh, I, as far as I remember, uh, this I had already at that time like one year because I started in June 2006 and then oh okay I, I was I was there 2004 5 or, or 2005 they started 2005 uh-huh oh yeah that was yeah. the have you heard stories yeah of, so no, that, I know yeah. the best place to work the, I know it I was know. the best really I mean I worked in Google I worked in many but Mm -hmm. Dell was the best really Amazing. that was it was too much it was it was the best the best experience I really I love going to work I remember yeah. I finished that four and I stayed until six or seven not working I just stayed in the building because uh -huh. it was do you so remember all fun. the parties the dinners and all stuff all the gift <laughs> gift cards they oh my I god there were months that That's I really different. my my salary I counted one time, I counted like 47 shirts I had of different, mm -hmm. <laughs> they, they, every, every day they gave you something like, yeah, yeah. Were you there you when, were, oh. were you there when we had a bomb, a bomb threat? Oh yes, of course, how not? <laughs> that everybody had to go how outside? How do you remember, yeah. Were you there, <laughs> were, were, were you there when FMLN started throwing rocks? Of course, mm -hmm. yes, yes, because 
uh, remember I was there since I'm there since 2006 oh, and yeah. also the transition when we became when we came from Dell to stream and then stream to converges and now converges to concentrics yeah nowadays I can tell you there is a similarity mm -hmm. uh, regarding to process like uh, how Dell was in those days but no it's not the same yeah you know class what, what I'm telling you about FMLN is that one day uh it was uno primero de mayo right mm -hmm. and in that time um you know how the pro the, like FMLN people used to like to protest a lot you know mm -hmm. <laughs> and I and I guess they walk from until the Salvador del Mundo you know painting and everything and then they started looking at Dell, hey, gringo, son gringo, imperialista, blah, blah. And they started like throw, attacking the building, <laughs> throwing rocks and everything. And everybody yeah. in the building, nobody go outside. Yeah, they, it was yeah. it was stupid, yeah. but it was kind of scary too. <laughs> exactly. Being in, from the inside, yeah, it was scary. Also, the, the day that you remember the bomb attack. <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah. the, the funny part was that the security from um, the embassy of the United States came that day, I remember, because there were a lot of like bingos in the building, you know, and they came and they were yeah. big. <laughs> they were a lot of bingos. You're right. All right, let's practice our reading. Do you see my page? A job interview example. Yes, I do. <laughs> Okay, there's a difference that between reading it and saying it, because people normally read job interview. Why do you want to work with our company? That's reading. But can you say it? Why do you want to work with our company? That's that's what they want from you in TOEFL. All right, so let's start with, okay, and then it says, tell what what you like about the company find out what you know about the company industry. Okay, so let's do this first part. Let's do this first part. Huh. Rodrigo Melendez, are you there? It's you, that one I was talking about. <laughs> Rodrigo, are you in class? Okay, that's that's my student. I <laughs> hello, Rodrigo. Are you there? Are you working? You see, that's the problem. I I don't. I I have never spoken with with Rodrigo, but I would like to know, Rodrigo, if you're there, if you're working, and maybe you have me. And because the last class, I never spoke with you, so I don't know your English. Okay. Rodrigo, Sunday, say hi. You see why Enzo Ford wants class, <laughs> wants the camera? <laughs> and you know, sometimes people evaluate bad. No, but I need nada. This one, <laughs> you know, that's what, you know, people go. Okay. But maybe Rodrigo is working and he's only listening to us. But tell me, Rodrigo, if you're only doing that because I would like to know if you're active. Okay, um, Claudia Marcela, can you read this part, please? Let me see how you read it. Um, from Chell, to no, both, okay. or? Like, do this presentation. Okay. Imagine you're giving a presentation to a class. You are human resources. Yes, mm, okay. and, and, you're t and you're telling everyone, okay, you're going to go to an interview. This is what we want, all right? Okay, class. <laughs> this is what we are going to do. Uh, we we'll answer. What do you want to work with our company? I'm sorry. What or why? 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 Sorry. No, okay. Why do you want to work with our company? Tell what you like about the company. Find out what you know about the company industry position re related to your long term career goals. Very good. All right, can you read the, can you read it again please but now after the question tell what you like about the company 
Go ahead. Uh, uh, again. Yes, please. Okay. Okay. Uh, what do you want to work with our company? Why do you work? Uh, what do you want? What do you want to work with our company? Tell what you like about the company. Find out what you you know about the company industry position related uh, to your long term career goals. Very good. Uh, Claudia Marcela, one last thing is why do you? Why do you? Why do you? Mm -hmm. Why do you? Yes. Very good. All right. Can you read the example? Alejandra Elizabeth, can you read the example, please? I will be proud to work for a company with such a long history of leadership in the industry. When I read about your company, I found that my skills are matching with your requirements where I can showcase my technical skills to contribute to the company growth. Okay. Remember what the video said? Sometimes you have to scan. Sometimes you have to scan what you're going to read. Now, the verb read. What is the past of read? Read. 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 But how do you spell it? R-E-D. Mm -hmm. R-E-D, right? Mm -hmm. So in this case, it was it was in past, but you read it in present. Mm -hmm. Yes. No, it's okay. It's okay. No worries. For example, um, I would be proud to work for a company with such a long history of leadership in the in the industry. When I read about your company, I found out, uh, or I found that my skills are matching. You know, blah, blah, blah. see. So you have to analyze what set what what tense we're we're doing here. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Very good. Adelina, can you read the don't? What you don't say in uh in an interview. Yeah, sure. Don't don't show that you're only interested in this job because of the violence. Do okay. before going to the interview, read something about the company, their achievements, and a little bit of common information like the was it started, head office founder, etc. Okay, very good. Oh, now it's raining by my house. Is it raining in your house? Yeah. Yeah. It's raining big. Yeah, it's raining hard here. Okay. So in a job interview, that's what you want to do, all right? So this is what you don't say, and this is what you do say. Hmm. So let's practice. Jose Wilfredo, why do you want to work in Pollo Campero? Oh, because I heard that there is a delicious taste that we are preparing. So you want to work here or eat here? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I like to worry. No, well, if I on the um, on an interview from Puyo Campero, I could say I want. No, I this is an interview. It, this is an interview. Imagine. So I say, okay. So um, Jose Wilfredo. So tell me, why do you want to work in Puyo Campero? Look at the oh. do's and don'ts. Don't. Because I don't want to miss that this opportunity. Mm -hmm. And so. No, no, no. When it says don't and do, this is like what you shouldn't say and what you should say. It's, it's just like a tip. Like, oh, for okay. example, you ask me, you ask me in an interview. Ask me, why do I want to work in Pollo Campero? And David. Yes. Why do you want to work in Pollo Campero? Um, I want to work in Pollo Campero because I see that since it started back in nineteen in the seventies, it has only grown bigger and bigger and bigger. And I want to be in a company where y empiezo con la paja, right? <laughs> but so what it says here do is before going to read something about the company. You know, so like I said, you know, I want to work in Puerto Campero because I see that I know that since the 70s, you guys started out with only three restaurants in Guatemala. 
And you guys expanded to El Salvador with four more restaurants. And now I see a Pollo Campero in every corner in El Salvador. So this company is very solid and that's in a company I want to work and retire in. Y inmediatamente, you know what? You're hired. <laughs> Next. <laughs> ya no pasen a más. <laughs> no, I'm joking. <laughs> All right. So no, uh, but uh, I'm, I'm, so what we're doing here is we're just practicing the reading, okay? So let's do the next one. Let me see. And a second part of reading is Mr. Saias. Yes, sir. In an interview with salary requirements, can you read this part? What part? The, mm -hmm. the, what are your salary requirements? Read this, please. Uh, and an example. Yes. Okay. Perfect. Remember the point right now. The point right now is reading. So imagine uh, Jose Saias that you're 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 giving this, you're you're giving the um presentation. You're preparing people for an interview. Okay. 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 Uh, I am a fresher. Salary is not first priority for me. This is a big platform to start my career and also want to improve my knowledge and skills and gain experience. So I expect uh, considerably of salary according to my ability and your company norms, which will fulfill my economical needs. Okay. Um, what don't you say when somebody asks you, what are your salary requirements? What don't you say? Um, Aquí dice donde dice uh, don't. I don't know. I think he's... Uh, okay, okay. Hold on. I'm, I'm sorry. Okay, what we're practicing here is reading. Okay? So, do you see where it says don't and do? Don't is in red yes. and do is in, in green. Yes? Okay. Yes. So, uh, according to this example, what don't you say when somebody asks you what are your salary requirements? Do you see where it Polite. says don't? Yes. I'm not sure how much can you give. Okay. So if I ask you, uh, Jose, say yes. What if somebody asks you, what are your salary requirements? What don't you say? I'm um, there. Uh... That part we we don't. Yeah. What I'm, does not that sure, say? Uh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Or or how much can you give? Okay, good. What should you say? What do you say? Okay, you can say say you I'd like more in the job duties and responsibilities before you can answer. It's situation where actual number is expected to provide a fair salary range based on current industry market research. Research. Okay, good. I like how you read it, but I need you to tell me. So we'll practice a little bit more about the reading about this tomorrow, okay? Okay. okay. Because like I said, there's a difference between reading and saying it. Reading and saying it. But it's okay. It's okay. It's our first class. We have 15 more, which is real practice. Rodrigo Melendez, are you there? He's going to be the big mystery man. I, he was my big mystery man last class. I didn't know people was passing curses with not participating because that is one of the basic rules, right? Uh, yes. I, uh -huh, and I, I really, I don't like taking part of that. And I don't, I, you know, I, I always, when I turn in my notes, that's why I need to speak with Rodrigo. I want to I want to hear your English. Re Claudia, 
who was in my class last time? Lisette, Isaias. Did do did we ever hear Rodrigo? No. <laughs> Rodrigo, if you're listening, I would like to hear you say hi. Participate tomorrow. Okay. Um, okay, class. I will see you tomorrow. Okay. Have a wonderful night. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. Good night, everybody. Good night.